Today we're going to install the Pace Edwards Switchblade on this 2019 new body style Ram 1500 with a 5.7 bed. Let's go ahead and get started. So when you pull your canister out of the box, this is exactly what it's going to look like. One thing you will notice is your strap that pulls the blanket out of the cover is going to wrap around the bottom of the canister and actually Velcro to the inside. What we're going to do first is go ahead and pull that out. Get that strap out of the canister and we're going to go ahead and wrap it around the bottom of the canister. And this thing is nice and lightweight. This is great to work with. Next, we can use this as kind of a handle and, uh, and pick it up and set it behind the cab of the truck right on top of the bed caps. All right, we're just going to drop it down in between the bed caps. We want to make sure it's kind of pushed all the way up against the bulkhead and we want to center it side to side. Next, we're going to go ahead and pull our strap. And just lay it loosely inside the bed of the truck. All right, so I'm going to start with the passenger side. This is the passenger side rail. Now, the way to identify it is that on the back end that faces towards the tailgate, there's going to be a cap. And on the front side that goes towards the, uh, the cab of the truck, it's going to be open. Um, the opening on the, the side of the rail where the blanket of the cover slides back and forth, of course, is going to be faced towards the inside of the bed of the truck. Um, and then we've got a seal that's going to sit on top of the bed caps. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and lubricate the inside of this rail. Everything I do on the passenger side rail, I'm also going to do on the driver's side rail. So now I'm going to turn to uh, our canister cover. Um, in our packaging, the canister cover uh, will be found. It's got uh, a uh, lubricating packet. This is Formula 303. Um, we're going to pull that away open that up and inside we're going to have a little towel that's got the lubricant on there. We're going to go ahead and uh, put that inside the rail and lubricate the inside of the rail. So we're going to get the bottom of the sweep seal really well. And we're also going to flip it over and get the top of the wear strip. If you don't lubricate it well, you might have issues with the cover binding. All right, now we're going to go ahead and flip the rail upside down. Um, and let me draw your attention to a couple of places on the back side of the rail where we have some shims already installed. Now, you will also receive in your kit with the clamps uh, some extra shims. It's my experience that almost every situation you need to install these extra shims. So what we're going to do is we're going to peel the tape protector off the back side of the shim and we're going to go ahead and stick it to the existing shims that are there. Now, I'm doing this because, like I said, my experience is just about every time you need to use those. Um, if we install the cover and slide it through the rails and it seems like it wants to hang up and bind because the rails are too close together, um, then I'm just going to pull the rails off and pull those shims back off. But if you need to have the, the shims there, uh, if you don't have them, uh, when you go to close the cover and close the tailgate, driving down the road, the cover might just accidentally open by itself. So we need to have those, uh, the, the spacing on the rails correct so that doesn't happen. Uh, next, we've got the seal uh, here. Now it's got a protector over top of that seal. So what we're going to do is peel away that protector and expose the seal. Now we can go ahead and flip the rail back over, let it hang on top of the bed cap, and then slide it forward. Um, we're going to lift up the cover to where the rail can slide into the cover and engage into the canister. All right, now what we're going to see is where the tab comes off of the canister. There's a little hole in the bottom of that. And that's going to line up to a threaded hole in the rail. So we're going to take our provided one inch bolt with lock washer and flat washer. We're going to go up through that hole, line it up to the hole in the canister, and thread that into place. And then we're going to tighten that down with a 7 16 socket. We're going to do that on the driver's side as well. Now up at the front, we're going to go ahead and attach the clamps. And you're going to see a bracket that's already attached to uh, the front of the rail. And it's got a little groove 
uh, coming off of that and the bottom of the rail and there's a cutout in that groove. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our clamp um, and if you see the notch in the back side of that clamp, that, that notch is going to ride on the groove on the opposite side and then the clamp is going to slide into the groove all the way up to this bracket. Next we're going to take the back half of the clamp and we're going to line it up to the front half of the clamp and just slide in together. Now you may have to wiggle that rail a little bit to maneuver that clamp into place to clear any obstructions up above it. Alright, next we're going to find our main bolt. We're going to use a lock washer and a flat washer and it's going to go through the large oval hole into the oval hole on the other side and now we've got a barrel nut that's going to slide into that groove back there and we're going to line up the bolt with the barrel nut and for right now we're just going to get that started we don't want to tighten it down just yet we just don't want it to come apart all right now this is your kickstand now the kickstand only installs on the tailgate end clamp it doesn't install on the front clamp what you're going to do is remove uh, the wing nut the lock washer and flat washer um, and then what I like to do is go ahead and rotate the, the kickstand all the way in. Next, we're going to slide this in like so, and then rotate the, clamp, the kickstand up until it hits the sidewall. Now, this sidewall is at an angle, and I don't want to have that, that clamp uh, face at an angle. So it's a little bit too long right now. So what I'm going to do is pull it back out. I'm going to pull the cap off. And you'll notice that the nut on here is offset towards this side. So if I completely undo this clamp, unthread it from the nut all the way, and then I rotate it around this way, I can essentially make my kickstand shorter. I'm going to put my plug back onto the bolt, slide that in place, and now my kickstand can come up and push up against the bed cap properly. What this does is this allows us to correct the angle on the rail and make it sit level. All right, once we've done that, go ahead and replace the flat washer and lock washer along with the wing nut. We want to do this on both sides. Now here's one thing to keep in mind. This is not going to be written in your instructions. This tailgate uh, piece with the liner will actually not close when the cover is in place. Uh, so you've got some options here. You can either trim off the top edge of the liner, which kind of looks unsightly, um, or what we're going to do is we're going to completely remove the tailgate portion of this liner for the sake of this install video. Um, what we're going to do here is remove uh, the eight Torx uh, bolts to hold that in place. You're going to use a T30. We're going to go ahead and pull this skin off. All right, so next what we're going to do is put some new bolts back into place to hold this panel down. Now, if you want to know exactly what the uh, type of bolt you need, this is an M6 bolt, which is a metric 6 millimeter. Uh, the thread pitch is 1.0, and I'm using 10 millimeter long bolts. Now, what you want to do is get all of the bolts lined up first before you go back and tighten any of them down. Um, also keep in mind, uh, we've just removed part of the liner. Um, now, there are different types of liners that are available for this, so if you just want to remove this, this piece of the liner and replace it with something, we do have 
uh, bed mat uh, tailgate pieces for liners uh, that are available just as individual pieces that you can replace that with. Um, or you can get like a complete bed rug uh, that is going to be a great liner, much better than the, the, the plastic drop-in liners. They don't damage the bed while you're trying to protect it. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and close the tailgate. I've already got this adjusted to where the rails are an eighth of an inch away from the tailgate on both sides. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reach underneath here and tighten down the clamps. I wanna make sure the rail is kinda of held nice and level. Once I get that uh, where it's tightened in place, I'm gonna rotate the kickstand up. We wanna make sure that kickstand is uh, perpendicular to the surface that it's tightened down against. Uh, so I'm not actually putting it straight on. I gotta tilt it up a little bit to get to a nice surface. And then I'm going to tighten that up, make sure it holds it level. Once it's held level, I can go ahead and tighten down the wing nut on this side. Now, make sure whenever you tighten down your clamps, uh, tighten them down, just get them nice and snug. You don't need to over tighten those. Do that on front and back. The, tail, the kickstand only happens on the tailgate side. Do that on all four clamps. All right, now next we are gonna go ahead and install our bulkhead seal. Now this is not quite as critical if you have a drop-in bed liner. Um, however, if you don't, you definitely wanna put that seal on here. The seal is gonna go as far back on that bulkhead as possible before it drops down into the bed of the truck. And so what we're going to do is just kind of lay it out, drop it into place. Now I've already wiped down this whole surface with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. Uh, that clears off any kind of uh, dirt, uh, wax buildup, any kind of debris that would weaken my bond with the bulkhead seal. And when you get to the end, Cut that in place. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our canister cover and put that in place. Now our rubber seal is gonna to go towards the cab of the truck. Um, now there may be some spots where the tape was wrapped around it that kind of uh, folded in. Just make sure it's kind of pulled out and rest on top. We also wanna make sure that uh, the holes that are in the canister cover line up to the holes in the bracket underneath. We want to make sure those screws are lined up to the holes in the canister. Make sure they're all kind of threaded into place and started before you tighten anything down. So make sure you're all four, both on each side, are lined up first. All right, now with a Phillips head screwdriver, we're going to go ahead and tighten them down. Again, just like everything else, we're not going to over tighten it, just get it nice and snug. And we'll do the other two on the passenger side as well. All right, now there's a number of places where you can run this drain tube. You can either just fish it down in between the bed and the liner, um, or if you've got a truck that does not have a drop-in liner, you can actually pop out this little plug, run the drain tube through that hole, and then just snap it in place. Once you hear it click twice, it's installed. Do that on the opposite side as well. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install this Velcro strip to the bottom of the rail. Now, remember we've got that cutout that's right here from installing the clamp. We wanna go just past that. Go ahead and peel the protective strip off of the back. Just adhere it right into place. Now this gives you a great spot to keep your strap out of the way. You want to make sure you do not keep the strap on top of the canister with the cover open and drive. This can actually drop down in between the bed of the truck and the, uh, the cab and get wrapped around your drive shaft. So make sure it's secured out of the way 
when you're not using it. Another place where you can secure this out of the way is just wrap right around the tie down hook down the bottom and it will Velcro to itself. Well, that concludes the installation. If you have any questions, call the experts or come visit us online.